Earth's cataclysmic history holds clues to the evolution of nature's most enigmatic creations. While millions of species die out, three ultimate adapters survive everything nature throws at them. Asteroids, ice, fire, and floods. They battle fierce rivals and triumph to exist even today. Now, time-traveling paleontologists track the incredible journey of three shape-shifting creatures to discover who is the ultimate survivor. Asia, Pakistan. In 1978, a team of fossil hunters discovers something mysterious in rock that was once the bed of the ancient Tethys Sea. When we found it, when we cleaned it, I really wasn't sure what it is. I think it would have four limbs. I expect probably it had short hair. If we think it's a land animal, we'd expect it to look wolf-like. But then, he spots a tiny S-shaped bone in the ear that couldn't belong to a wolf. Known as a sigmoid process, it's unique to one order of animals that now lives in the water. It's something primitive, it's something transitional, but nonetheless, with the sigmoid process, a primitive whale. As incredible as it sounds, the modern whale began life as a land animal. Fifty million years ago, Earth is a hot place and home to one of the whale's ancient ancestors, named Pachycetus. About the shape and size of a modern wolf, it lives on a diet of plants and small animals. But climate change has wiped out its food supplies. So Pachycetus takes his first tentative steps into water. The reason for this risky move? Earth's warmer waters produce an abundance of marine life. So he's lured into the shallow waters by a banquet of food. He's living large until he realizes he's not the only diner. In fact, he's on the menu. And sure enough, Pachycetus soon disappears from the fossil record. The secret of what happened to him is buried in the earth until 1994, when Philip Gingrich returns to Pakistan to unravel the mystery of this creature's amazing shift from life in one world to another. They're extraterrestrial in the sense that they left the earth they left the land and live in the sea today, which is a little like outer space, really. And the change to be able to live there is big. His team finds another bizarre ancient whale skeleton, which could be the missing link, the land animal that finally cut its ties with fresh water. This creature has shape-shifted into a better swimmer, He's got a shorter, more powerful neck for diving. His rear legs widen and become more like flippers. And his tail develops muscles. But it's the teeth of this ancient whale that reveal a critical piece of evidence. Just four million years after Pachycetus first enters the water, this whale lives permanently in the sea. This is the first whale that really took to the sea. And to be honest, we didn't believe it. Gingrich dubs his find Rhodocetus. Incredibly, 
it appears to be the missing link between the wolf-like ancient whale, its descendants, and modern whales. Clues about this amazing transformation lie in the new world where Rhodocetus lives. 46 million years ago, India is separate from the landmass of Eurasia. The Tethys Sea lies between. Over tens of millions of years, India moves closer to Eurasia. As the Tethys Sea narrows, it becomes more shallow and full of light, a perfect home for breeding microorganisms and the fish that feed on them. To adapt to this watery fish mart, Rhodocetus has shapeshifted. Over millions of years, changes in the genetic makeup of his ancestors that helped the species survive are passed on to him. Rhodocetus has evolved kidneys to process salt water, which he excretes through his urine, and he can live in the ocean full time. Here, there's plenty to eat. Life is good, till he realizes he's not alone. Sharks and crocodiles have found clumsy ancient whales easy meat. So Rhodocetus must adapt to escape his predators, or he's history. Once again, he shapeshifts and evolves an upgrade to his most distinctive feature, his inner ear. Professor Fred Spohr studies the organ of balance key to the survival of Rhodocetus. The organ of balance inside the inner ear is an absolutely vital, a key organ to function for any animal. It's an organ that makes you aware, conscious or subconscious, whether you're moving, and it helps you to keep your balance and not fall over. Spohr produces a model of the human inner ear, enlarged 12 times. It consists of three canals at right angles filled with fluid. The fluid moves when the head moves. Nerve cells register the fluid movements and send signals to the brain. Then, the brain instantly decodes the signals and adjusts our balance so we don't fall over. But acrobatic behavior makes the fluid in our inner ear slosh around, sending scrambled messages to the brain and causing dizziness. Spore discovers that whales develop a way to prevent dizziness. For comparison, actually look at the inner ear of a whale that has also been enlarged 12 times. Then we can see that there's not that much overall difference in size, even though whales are, of course, much larger than, than humans are. However, the enormous difference is that the bit that deals with balance here and here is enormously reduced in the, the whale. The whale's inner ear is so small that the liquid inside barely moves. It allows whales to turn and twist at high speed without getting disoriented. This unique trait makes Rhodocetus agile enough to outmaneuver predators for millions of years. He survives and continues to evolve. But his descendants are about to face two new monster problems, climate change and a terrifying new predator. 39 million years ago, Basilosaurus, the T-Rex of the sea, is thriving. He's a fully equipped super predator. He's got incredible eyesight, ace hearing, and a long, thin body to hunt in shallow waters. But he's also kept two leftover parts from his terrestrial past. The most interesting thing about Basilosaurus is the retention of hind limbs with all the bones right down to the tips of the toes. So they are a vestige of a former life on land. They're a token of this giant's humble beginning on land as Pachycetus. 
and his change in size turns him from the hunted into the hunter. Now he's got the goods to take on his old foe, the shark. Basilosaurus rules the Tethys Sea for a while, until one of his neighbors emerges, a smaller, seemingly more vulnerable whale species, the Duradon whale. It's similar to a modern dolphin. It has a powerful spine and short flipper-shaped forelimbs. And like the modern dolphin, it has a tail fluke. But at just five meters long, it's much smaller than Basilosaurus. Only one of these two species will survive to become ancestor to the modern whale. Will it be little Duradon or the giant Basilosaurus? According to the fossil record, 36 million years ago, the mighty Basilosaurus dies out. What happened? Philip Gingrich theorizes that Basilosaurus evolved its long, thin body to hunt in shallow waters, which was working for him until climate change struck again. 35 million years ago, Earth has another cold snap. Oceans cool. Antarctica splits from South America and develops a permanent ice cap. As a result, sea levels drop and shallow coastal waters disappear. Basilosaurus is forced to hunt in deep water. But here, he struggles. He lacks the power to dive. Maybe it's only good for living in surface water. Maybe once you need to dive to get food, it wasn't so good anymore. The giant is gone, but short and muscular, little Duradon has no such problems. He survives. But the future of the whale species is in grave danger. Later, ancient whales face what many consider the most terrifying predator in history. Monster sharks, known as Megalodon. These are nothing like the sharks of the past. Weighing in at 46,000 kilos, the Megalodon shark's mouth is so big, a human could stand upright inside it. With the monster sharks biting at his tail, Duradon flees for his life toward the polar seas. And he has an ace in the hole. He's the descendant of a land animal, a mammal. So he's warm-blooded. His body can handle the cold of the polar seas. But monster sharks can't. They're cold-blooded. Their bodies can shut down in polar waters. Duradon has his eyes on the prize and wins, surviving to become the ancestor to modern whales. From the miraculous story of an animal that began on land and evolves to live in the sea, these three shape-shifting superstars make to get this far is truly remarkable. All of them start life on land. A tiny, early dinosaur evolves into a fearsome carnivore, then shrinks grows feathers, and finally takes to the skies, where Earth's only surviving dinosaurs still soar today. And an awkward land animal takes to the sea, where more than 80 whale species now thrive, from the largest, the blue whale, with a heart the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, to the bowhead, who can live for over 200 years. Bears, birds, and whales. Which of them proves to be Earth's greatest adapter? Turns out, evolution isn't a winner-takes-all battle with just one crown champion. Each in its own element 
is a shape-shifting superstar. On land, in the air, and in the sea. These are the ultimate survivors.